Welcome back to Focus on Learning with Richland School District. This time I'm joined by Leona Libby Middle School Principal Andre Harganani. Andre, how are you today? I'm doing great. Well, thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. You kind of started this school. Yes, I kind of did. I was, but it wasn't just me. There was a whole core team uh, that the district helped assemble where we had teachers, uh, parents, students, industry professionals all come together and plan out what this school would become. And it is something different. This is a STEAM school. It's the first STEAM school in the Richland School District and we've heard of STEM schools. So right. Andre, what's a STEAM school then? Well, a STEAM, a STEAM school makes sure that we integrate the arts with STEM. So it's not just the technology and the engineering, but also how does the arts play into all of that? and helping the students see how all of this is integrated in all their courses so that their subjects, like even in science, it's not just that science is now a STEM course, but how are we integrating engineering and the arts and technology into that science course to make it a STEAM course. So integration, not just emphasis on these. Right. And that is really cool. In fact, some of those programs you're working on are things like the science of dance. That's correct. So actually two of our core team members, one who works over at LIGO and the other one at Mid-Columbia Ballet, uh, met and the core team and they had this idea of interpretive dance of gravitational waves. And so they, they actually started it as an after school program at one of the other middle schools and then decided that we would write a grant with Artswa so that it could become one of our interdisciplinary projects that we're doing in our school. And that's one of three grants the school has already been approved on. Yes, that's correct. So we also received a grant that helps fund part of our makerspace area, the Smart Lab, and then we received a third grant to start the first Science Bowl team in the middle school so that not only will there be a Science, team, science Bowl team at Hanford and Richland, but now also at Leona Libby. Why is it important to keep these electives or even grow into these newer electives? Well, we wanted to make sure that this, all the students' interests are met, and so we, we wanted to make sure we were continuing the orchestra and the band and the drama and the art classes that they were very familiar with, but then also add on the makerspace class, the robotics class, the computer science discoveries, uh, production, uh, broadcasting and production, CAD, all these other things that weren't available to students before. That's very important. Very cool that they're offered. Yes, and there's a lot of excitement that the students are seeing. In fact, I think that helped with the excitement of the new school was when the students got to choose from these many, many electives. And then I heard the buzz around town and all these families coming about how excited their fifth grader was to go to middle school went from trepidation and fear to excitement because of all the elective choices. Oh, that is a good change in how that usually goes. Yeah. And things are really focused on project-based learning at Leona? Yes, that's right. So all the teachers went through a training this summer on how do you create projects that students can learn through rather than is simply an extension of what they learned. So sometimes when you think of projects, you think, okay, we've learned everything, now let's have a project to apply it. But that's sort of just adding a dessert at the end. We wanted the projects to be the meal, where through engaging in the project, you're learning the content that you're supposed to be learning. And so um, all the teachers were trained for three full days, and not only that, but we invited industry professionals to join us. So we had four scientists and engineers from PNNL who stayed with us during those three days to help sit with the various teachers and start planning the projects that we're going to be implementing this year. So PNNL was there with you guys. Yes. Who else? Well, as part of the core team, like I mentioned, we had a representation from LIGO, from Mid Columbia Ballet, from the Washington State Department of Ecology. Uh, Washington State University Tri-Cities, uh, gosh, we had a chemist from somewhere, Kirian Viola. Uh, we had, so we had various uh, people coming in with different expertise because my concern was we don't want to just call it a STEAM school. We want it to actually be an authentic STEAM school. How is what the students are learning in their classes actually related to what they could be doing in real life and what their parents might be doing in the community? Uh, so 
now some of those projects are starting to take that focus. So for instance, in the seventh grade, they're looking at the health of the river. How does how do scientists define the health of a river, right? What is actually happening? So we learned from one of the professionals, industry professionals that joined us at the PBL training that they actually put robots in the river to test how healthy the river is, right? And so incorporating that into the actual project that the students will be doing was very important. And this has also been, it's sort of a whole new way of teaching. Not only mm -hmm. is it this whole new curriculum style, but you're also doing everything on the Chromebooks. That's right. So the district has a strong initiative where across the district, every student will have a Chromebook and uh, will there will be a strong emphasis on instructional technology. We happen to be the first school where we checked out the Chromebooks to each and every student. And that happened on orientation before school even started. Each student was checked out this Chromebook, which they'll keep throughout the school year. And so that created this shift in how students learn, right? Because now teachers can go more from lecturers to coaches, right? Because the teachers don't have to convey all the knowledge to the students. Now the students can go on their Chromebooks, they can go up and look up various resources, become more self-directed in finding the knowledge that they need to know. So then the teachers can coach them on where they should be going to find this knowledge, what can we do with this knowledge, right? How do we apply it? How do we extend it? How do we integrate all the different things that we're learning? And then can test the students and get much more timely and immediate feedback so that they can start using that data to help the various needs that, of the various students. So we can see exactly how one student is doing versus another student. Let me go help this student on this concept that they're struggling with. Let me help this student on this concept that they're struggling with. Oh, this student is going way ahead. Okay, what other things can I get that student excited about? So that it can become much more individualized and personalized through the technology. Now, of course, that's a huge shift. Teachers are learning how to do that just as students are learning how to adapt to this new environment. So how is that adaptation going for everyone? Well, it's week four, and so every day I think is getting better as um, not only the students, but the teachers become more comfortable with the fact that we're, every student has a device, that we can put resources to different students to meet their needs, that we don't have to wait, oh, I forgot to get this thing done, I gotta go rush make copies right away, and said you could just stick it on the learning management system and it's there, right? So you can make a lot more adjustments much quicker. And speaking of the learning management system, you guys recently adopted one to use called Canvas. So for those of us out there who don't know what a learning management system is or why it's needed, can you right. explain? Yeah, sure. So because everything is done on the computer, or not everything is done, but a lot is being done on the computer, we needed a way to manage that. How do you organize everything that's on the computer? And so a lot of, pretty much every university has adopted a learning management system. And so those of you who may have gone to college recently or know someone who's gone to college recently, you're probably familiar with some sort of learning management system. And here in the state of Washington, most of those colleges and universities use Canvas. Um, and so the district actually recognized that as we move towards the one-to-one -one initiative, that the district would need to adopt a learning management system. So that wasn't something that Libby decided, but that was something that the district decided. And so then the head of instructional technology formed a committee and they looked at the various LMSs and determined that Canvas was the one that would best meet our needs. And it helps with organization, accessibility for students and staff, right? Oh yeah, so all the assignments can be on there. You can organize them in modules, which would be like units or subunits. Uh, the students can take their assessments on there. All the grading can take place on there. It goes directly to the grade book. Uh, so it's, it's really a one-stop shop for everything online. And that's helpful. Yes. <laughs> and so now becomes a lot of the awareness buildings of how do you access Canvas, where do I go to see if my child is up to speed on where they should be and how they're performing. Uh, so there's a lot of a big educational piece that's going with that right now. Very interesting. Yeah. And teachers, um, they've had to learn a lot too. How are you helping them? Yes, so it's been a very busy summer for the teachers and very busy four weeks for the teachers. And so, um, I've been trying my best to be just very encouraging, and the teachers have been very resilient, uh, not only in 
you know, learning the new way of teaching, the new software, everything like that, but then all the technology glitches that come along with that, right? It's a new building. We had new wireless ports and, and all the issues that came with that and making sure that that's all working. The Chromebooks, where maybe some Chromebooks could connect but not others, right? So it took a couple weeks to really get through all of this and just keep on pushing through to make sure that everything is smooth and we can actually now, uh, where everybody's on, everyone can get on their Chromebook, everything's working smoothly. So, but there were a lot of these little glitches along the way. I think teachers and students expected that in a new building and especially with a new initiative. And so everyone's been showing a lot of resilience. That's wonderful. Yeah. And finally, I know there's a lot of focus on getting these kids to be independent learners. Yes. So much so that there's a lot of push on goal orientation for the sixth graders. Yes. So our sixth grade team's been doing a really good job of making sure that the students are setting goals for their learning. So they know what is my goal for the week, and not only what is my goal for the week, but how, am I, how do I think I'm gonna achieve that goal? And then at every week, the teachers are checking in with the students, okay, what was your goal? Did you meet your goal? Um, did your idea of how you would meet your goal work or not? What might we have to adjust for next week? So that the students are not just being um, sort of pushed into what they need to do, but they are the drivers of their education. So much so that there's no longer the teacher dictating when the test is. It's not like, all right, everybody, today is a quiz or a test. The students are deciding when they're ready to take the test or quiz. And it's been exciting to see, because I was in a classroom the other day, and as soon as the teacher was like, all right, everybody, let's start getting, start, uh, let's start working on wherever you left off, right away a line formed by the teacher with students requesting to take the test. And you know, normally you wouldn't see students so excited about taking a test. And they mm -hmm. had to tell the teacher why they felt they were ready to take it. So it's a, it's a huge shift. It's very cool. Yeah. All right. Principal Harganani, I think there's a lot of big things happening at Leona Libby Middle School. Yeah. And some strong educational foundations being built there. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Yes. And we'll be right back with more Focus on Learning with Richland School District.